setting up a factory reset version of Blender from default so that you have optimal settings to work. This is just kind of the way I will set it up and I thought I'd bring you through it and explain some of the things and why I'm changing certain settings. So right away at the very start, whenever you look Blender up, if I want to zoom into this corner down here, I can't just hover my mouse and zoom down there, which is quite annoying. The same if I want to go into this corner, it's always to the center of the viewport by default. So we need to come up to edit. We need to come to preferences, navigation, zoom to mouse position. And this here will solve that problem straight away. So now when we want to zoom down here, we can zoom down there. When we want to zoom to this corner, we can zoom to that corner. We want to zoom to the center and it works properly. The next thing you'll want to know is let's say you wanted to zoom around this corner, or rotate around this corner after zooming. So we'll zoom to that corner. And if we want to just rotate around this corner, we click the middle mouse button. Oh, and it doesn't work. So what do we do to solve that? Well, lots of people like to use orbit around selection. I don't like to use that. Come to edit preferences, navigation, and you can try orbit around selection. Instead, we're going to use depth. This allows us Blender to use the depth of where the mouse is located as a rotational point. So let's say now we zoom in here and we press middle mouse over the object and we can rotate right around that object exactly where the mouse is located. Same if we want to rotate around the middle, we can rotate around the middle. If we want to rotate around this corner, we can rotate around that corner. And this just gives you a lot more control straight away. So these two are like the first two settings that I change every time that I have a default version of Blender. I don't like using the program without these two settings. And so I'd highly recommend you give them a try if you don't use them. And so now that we've got the most two most important settings out of the way, we're going to talk about some other interface tips as well as setting up our default startup file. So up here, if we click file and we click defaults, you can click save start file. That's just going to save the exact way the Blender in its current state is every time below it. And there's another thing here we want to check straight away before we go save in a default startup file, we need to change a lot more stuff. So external data, automatically pack resources. I highly recommend you check this for your default startup file because when you go to pass your Blender file onto someone else, textures will be unloaded if they're not in the same correct paths, which they won't be. So packing the resources just allows it to pack all of the data into the one Blender file. It'll make the Blender file a lot bigger, but it will save you a headache if you have to reload that file later on on a different location. So we're going to tick this and no new files have been packed. And then the next few things I like to do tweaks wise, we'll talk about a shortcut here real quick. So over in the right hand side, if you can't see or you want to zoom in, we're going to just move me over here for a second over here in the properties. You can press control plus middle mouse button and scroll to scroll through the panels without clicking them. That's the first one. Then we can use control plus middle mouse button and up and down to zoom in and out if we want to, if we can't see something. The next things that we want to talk about here is the 3D viewport. So by default, let's really come into edit mode, which is tab and that kind of applies for everything. So let's say we open a shader editor here and we make a node group. Let's say we go boom, we go like this, we click right click, right click, click make group. And then we're inside this group. And if we click tab on the group input, so we're on the group input, we press tab, we tab back out of the node group, Do you know? So it's like edit mode inside the shader editor. It's the exact same as the way we go into edit mode inside Blender here. So we go three tab, bring to, back to object mode. And we're gonna talk about setting up the pie menu that will allow you to go into edge, face and vertex mode individually with one pie menu because we'll be setting up machine tools. Ideally, you want to set up machine tools with, with your Blender. In my opinion, I use it all the time in every single version of Blender. It's completely free. But yeah, so we tab, tab in here, tab. Let's say we want to do this now. We do an inset and we extrude it down just for a second. And we're going to bring it down there for just a second and you'll see what happens is if we snap this to the top view using alt plus middle mouse button when we're locked we can't see the depth that's inside this block it's very two-dimensional as soon as we're looking at it orthographically so what we need to do is we need to come up to options just up here just above options in the shading tab and we want to tick the box called cavity it's right here tick cavity and we want to change it to both instead of screen so we're going to click both and straight away over here, what you can see now is we can see the depth. 
So as we just change that again, you can adjust the ridge and the valley if you want it more stronger. But I would highly recommend in your default startup file, saving this as your default or something similar to this as your default, depending on what you like. So right now we would save this as the default startup file. If you want, you can save it here and we can overwrite it as well. So we can go defaults, save startup file. And now when we click file, new, new general, click don't save because it doesn't matter. We don't even need to save this because it's the default. And you'll see this is a new scene and it's properly turned on and ready to go. And you'll also see if you go to external data, automatically pack resources, automatically checked, which is what are really vital. And there's a lot more stuff we can still do here. So one thing I like to do here as well is patterns that are up here in the outliner. I don't like these. So we can change that in the theme using edit preferences, themes, and we want to just go down here to outliner and then on alternate rows, we want to change the alpha to zero. And then straight away, you'll see over here. Now we have no, none of this pattern anymore and it's nice and clean. And we can do the same for the shader editor. So down here, there's a grid currently, and we'll just come to the node editor here and we can change the grid color. If you want to change the grid color here to the other dots, but I don't like the dots at all. So we'll come down here to grid levels and turn it to zero. And then one more thing you may or may not want to do is depending on if you like spaghetti nodes, you can change noodle curving to zero and you'll get straight connections now between your nodes. Uh, there's a lot of other things you can, you can change nearly every single color inside the themes, but there is a lot of settings. So I'm just talking about some of the most important ones that I like to change straight away at the start. Another one here in themes that you might not be aware of is whenever you come into vertex mode, if the verts are too small and you can't see them, you come into themes, you can go to viewport, we can scroll down to the bottom and you can change the vertex size here. So if you want really big verts, or you want to make them really easy to click, like I don't like them that big now, that's just a bit too big, but I do like them slightly bigger just to see exactly where all the points are on the mesh and uh, maybe just a slight bit smaller than that. Same with edge size, you can change your edge width as well if you want really wide edges to be able to click them easier. But for now, we're just going to leave this at a default because I'm going to export this theme with the face orientation, the noodle curve and the outliner stuff, all the stuff that I've changed currently in the video. Okay, another tip here as well as we're talking about this here, scrolling in and out. Well, if you want to maximize an area, you can press control space in the area and you just get a full viewport or even in an outlier or, or the shader editor. So you can switch between full areas really quickly. Just control space, control space over into the, even the panel. Another thing that you might want to do is open up a second window and put on a second monitor and then split the interface into multiple other windows. So let's say we have an asset browser here and we want something else like file browser up here and we want to put this in a separate window so we can drag that over to our other monitor now and then you can still do the same there control space to maximize the two of these okay, so I loaded my startup file and uh, again and we're just going to change another thing here so if we come into edit mode on this object you'll see that let's say we delete this face for one second on the inside these faces are gray and gray on both sides the normal is only facing one way. So I'm going to show you something. The normal is the way that the face is facing according to the 3D program. And so if we turn on face orientation, it will show us what way the normals are. And the red ones mean that that is not the, the normals point in this direction, the way the way the purpley color it is. The red color is the opposite of the normal. And we put on the face normals right here and we make them a bit bigger. You can see which way the normals are pointed. So you can see here that the normals point out this way, but we don't want to have to turn on and off this overlay all the time, like face orientation up here, come down and turn it back off just to see if there's a re like an issue with our mesh. So if there's ever something that's not rendering, it's normally because the normals haven't been calculated. So let's say we have this at the minute and we're going to turn back on the face over face orientation overlay. Well, to adjust our normals, we use Alt N and we can flip individual normals around. So we can do Alt N flip 
or else you can do A to select all and then do shift N to recalculate the normals and that will try to push all the normals to the outer side to, that's facing towards the camera. And so what I like to do here is so that we never have to turn on this face orientation overlay up here. We'll turn back off our face or face normals and then we'll turn back off face orientation and instead we're going to come to edit preferences, come to themes, come to 3D viewport and we're going to come to face orientation and we can see here face orientation back face orientation front we can bring the alpha to zero of the front and then just turn on face orientation for good and so now we'll only see red on the the parts of the mesh where the normals are facing incorrectly so that's really solid we can just save our default startup file again. So we're just going to go default, save startup file, save startup file, and we've overrided our startup file again. So now every time we open a new startup file, we don't need to turn on face orientation. We're going to talk about the default add-ons that come with Blender that need to be enabled. So the first one is loop tools. I'm going to tell you why it needs to be enabled by default, why you need to save this as your startup file, and this should definitely be enabled loop tools. Loop tools, so I'll give you a perfect example, is Let's say we use this here and we, in fact, yeah, well, this is a perfect example. So we'll select these faces just around the edge. Yeah. And we'll press X and we'll just delete the faces. So the faces, boop. And so now that we have this, if we come into edge mode and we select this edge and we select the other edge and you wanted to connect these two edges, some people would try press F to fill. And that's just going to give you this blocked look here, which you don't want. The only way to do this is to bridge the gap and you need loop tools to enable this. But once you have these two loops selected, you can right click, click loop tools at the top and click bridge. And now that's that solved. You will bump into an issue where you will need to bridge this. You will just 100%. If you're 3D modeling, if you're doing ArcViz, you will need to bridge this at some point. So that's loop tools that you really need. It's a must have. The next one is going to be extra objects. So if we type in extra, we want to add extra curves and extra objects. I think these should just be enabled by default. But yeah, when we press shift A, we get new curve objects. We also get single vert and a few other useful things. So obviously a really important setting is to make sure that you're using the correct cycles render device as you can see here right now it's set to none for some reason but we want to be using if you're using rtx card you want to be using optics yeah they're going to use that as a primary processing device i also like to turn this up a little bit undo steps to at least 100 just in case but realistically the better you get at blender the less you'll have to undo stuff so that there's that Depending on what way you like to have it set up, we can use it to turn off our overlays up here. And I like to turn off, I like to leave this navigation on here at the side. And then I like to turn off the axes. So over here, we can go like this, the viewport overlays, and we can just disable X, Y, and we can disable the grid if you want as well. And you still know which way Z is up because it says it right here. You can see the gizmo, so you don't worry about that. And also whenever, let's say we have this and we want to do a move on it, you're still going to want the object's local origin and the way it's pointing as well. And that's global at the minute, but if we click local up here, we'll see that it's local origin. Tab in, in and out of edit mode and then pressing one, two, three to switch between. I don't want to have to press tab and then press one to go into vertex or tab and then press three to go into face just want one single button that does it all. So what we're going to do is we're going to install machine tools right now. And so if we come to, let's say here, we're going to click here, click new window. And we're just going to search for machine with a three on the end as an E and then type in tools. And we're going to go to Gumroad, download the latest version, which is compatible with Blender 4.0. 1.6 machine tools 1.6 so once we've downloaded machine tools zip file we just come to edit preferences add-ons install click the zip 
and then we just if it doesn't pop up it should just pop up straight away at the top but if it doesn't we search machine tools tick it and then once we're in it there's a lot of settings so here we just want to come down to pi menus and we want to come to the edit mode pi so we're just going to stretch this out a little bit so we know what we're doing here and i like to use the save pi i like to use the cursor and origin pi definitely shading pi modes pi definitely once we enable these pies, we can press tab now, and now we can come straight into face mode, straight into edge mode, straight into vertex mode, and then straight into object mode, and just all with one key. All we do is we press tab, and we can switch between all modes just with a direction. So this is just a lot faster. We can just go tab, object mode, click the object, shift S, and you'll notice we get a better origin menu here which is organized so much cleaner than the original one. If I just disable machine tools real quickly, you'll see what I'm talking about. So we just go menus, add-ons, come up here, we'll disable machine tools, press the same thing, shift S, and we have this big mess. I, this, I can't use this at all as well. So this is another reason why I highly recommend downloading machine tools. But you can turn on all these pies. And another one I like is shift C, which is the collection management shift s for the origin tab for the edit mode object mode which we can also go into every mode from here so now that we've installed machine tools anyway there's also a lot of other tools in machine tools that you can use but i would highly recommend you check out the documentation if you want to go in depth in more settings or i can make a separate video all about machine tools there's a lot of stuff in it and it's completely free so definitely check that out the next thing is going to be look mouse navigation. So if you want to kind of move around your scene like you do in Unreal, you there's another add-on we can get that's completely free. Okay, here we go. So it's up, been updated for Blender 4. We're just going to come here, compatibility and bug fixes. The latest version, we're going to download right mouse navigation and click save as again. I'm going to click save as we're going to put on the same place and click save. We're going to come back to blender. We're going to click edit preferences, add ons. We're going to just search install right mouse navigation. Here we go. We're going to tick this. And once we take this, now we can navigate our scene the same way as we do in Unreal Engine. So we can move around, we can zoom in, we can move left and right with A and D move left and right with a and d and we can also while holding the right mouse button we can also scroll the wheel to slow down the camera so if you want just this panning effect or scroll up to speed up handy way to set up your cameras as well because you can just let's say we have this we just go sh or let's say we already have a camera here we just press numpad zero or else over here on the right hand side toggle the camera and then what we can do is press n we're going to go view we're going to lock the three camera to view over here in the end panel camera to view and then now what we can do is we can just point the camera whichever way we want using right mouse navigation and we can line our camera up right quite nicely doing this stuff here with whatever you want to do there really is just so much to talk about whenever it comes to this topic so i can't go over it all in one video but there will be more videos made about this type of topic later on whenever i kind of realize what's missing out of this one if you did find anything useful in the video, drop a like down below and a comment. And uh, yeah, I appreciate all the feedback. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next.